Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim. And I'm on Bald Mountain in Bennington. And I'm doing a lot of processing in this run. And the last thing I want to do is get the camera out and film right now. But it's present, it's real, and there's a great deal of value in it for me right now. When we enter into a relationship, we seldom relate. Relationship is really a misnomer. To relate in Latin means to carry back, relatus. It's the same word as refer, which refere, ferry to carry. So a relationship is about bringing something, bringing something back. But what we do instead is we prelate. We put something forth. We carry it in front of us. Our expectations, our dreams, our wishes, our hopes. And we carry them in front of them as in front of us and we put them on the the person there. We put our hopes on them, we put our dreams on them, we put our expectations on them. And then we don't marvel at them so much as we marvel at how good they look dressed up in our expectations. How good they look dressed up in our hopes. And that's not who they are. You've changed them, you've photoshopped them, you've put them in stage makeup and you put them in an outfit and you went Christian Bale on them and completely transformed them to play this particular role. But underneath there's a Christian Bale who doesn't look and act like that. Or a Meryl Streep. Or someone who goes through these great transformations. We do that to people when we fall in love. We prelate. We don't relate. We don't look at who they are. We don't stop and say, let me clean off my windshield. Let me clean off these hopes and these expectations. And let me see clearly, who are you? Who are you? Show me who you are. And then we carry that back. We relate. We say, that's your truth. I now breathe that in. I take that into me. I carry it back into me. Ah, oh, I can relate to that. And maybe there are periods of doing this, but generally we're only motivated to do this because of the prelation that we already did. We fall in love with the hopes, we fall in love with the dreams, and then because of that we feel so connected that now we're like, tell me all about you. Give me who you are. I'll take care of it. Show me your truth. And in that sense, we do relate, and that's when we do move to the next level where we say, you can trust me, and I hope that I can trust you, and let's have a commitment, and we build a relationship where we are carrying things back, but almost always, it's built on a foundation of prelationship. It's built on a foundation of projected expectations, hopes, and dreams. And I need you to dress up in this makeup and this costume. And then, when you're on stage wearing that disguise, then I'll listen to you. Then I'll be open to you. Then I will carry you back into me. But don't take the makeup off. Don't take the clothing off. Don't step out of character. I don't want to know who you are outside of that prelation. I only want to know you in the context of that prelation or framed by that prelation. And either side of that relationship, you've got one person who is being chased. 
you've got the other person that's doing the chasing and all relationships have this power dynamic. And the person being chased, they can often feel the projection. They may not know how to articulate it. They may not know at the time that it's happening, at the speed of life, what's going on. They just know that, okay, it's moving a little too fast. All right, um, wow, you're jumping to some pretty big conclusions already. And the other person is like, why are you not responding? Why are you not jumping? Maybe I just need to do more. How come you're not filling this role? And then eventually you get to a point where you're both worn out and the costumes come off, the makeups come off, and it's like, Whoa, who are you? Where did the person I fell in love with go? I don't recognize this person. That person was never there. You made that person. You hired a makeup and special effects crew and a stylist and you manufactured that person in your mind. You're your desire never allowed their truth to, to show up or manifest. And maybe they tried to show you their truth time and time again and, and you would reject it. You wouldn't let it through. I don't want to hear that. That's not true. That's not you. Stop being like that. And things go from there and relationships can get abusive, abusive, or they can drag on forever, but it generally doesn't end well. So when I see articles and conversations about polyamory and about how we're, we're not supposed to be monogamous and that the men and women were not supposed to have long-term bonds, I think all of that is missing the point. We are social species. We are a bonding species. And looking to evolutionary biology to try to find an answer to this is not the way to go. It's more about psychology. It's more about understanding how a, a brain, how a brain projects on the world, how a brain manufactures what we see and changes what we see based on our fears, our desires, our needs, our moods, the world around us actually changes, especially the social world. The physical world changes to a small degree, but the social world can change dramatically in our minds and how we perceive it, dramatically. Especially if we've fixed you with a certain identity, a certain character that's not yours and you actually change by becoming your truth or even altering what that truth is we get hurt but what is it that's being hurt we're disappointed that you're not playing the role that i assigned to you that you're actually showing up as you are that's an opportunity that's an opportunity to say whoa okay i was pre-lighting i was projecting. I was creating all kinds of stories and fantasies about you and wow, okay, that wasn't accurate. So help me move through that. Help me find out what the truth is. Help me find out who you really are. Because we either have a history together or I really do like you or I'm attracted to you and I don't want to throw this away because I'm hurt because the story, the role that I was creating for you isn't accurate. Rather than running away and getting mad or blaming you or trying to force you to comply, that's an opportunity to go deeper, to say, okay, tell me more. Show me more. Let's bond there. Let's bond in the midst of a grounding. Let's bond in the midst of an honesty. Let's bond in the midst of sadness. If you look at people that have been in combat, 
the bonds that they form in, in those dire moments are unlike anything they'll ever feel again. You know, bonds forged in fire, forged in just the naked truth of human beings in this temporary life that we live and the suffering we often endure. A bond formed in the midst of that is, there's no pretense. There's no delusion. There's no dating or honeymoon period. There's just real person and real person. Projection may come later, often does. Uh, expectations grow and build and people generate stories and they say, okay, wow, what a great foundation. I'm gonna just run with that in my own head and I'm gonna think that the conversations I'm having in my head with you actually took place in the outside world. And then when I talk about the the relationship that we have and you're like, wait a minute, did we actually have a conversation about that? I don't remember talking about that. So how did you get to that point without me in that discussion? And this is just normal human behavior. It's not wrong. It's not bad. But again, going back to the polyamory conversation, it's when you learn what your brain does, when you learn how the simulation engine works, when you learn about the projections that we map onto the world, especially the social world, and, and you can start to see those dynamics playing out in you and around you, then for a while you're like, holy cow, I'm in the matrix. But eventually you get to a place where you're like, okay, caught that happening that's automatic I got hardware in here that does that so it's always going to be automatic but I can catch it and maybe I didn't catch it a couple years ago maybe I didn't know about that but I do now I can catch it now I can reframe it now I could admit to it now I can have a conversation about it now and say oh hey guess what this funny thing happened I just realized that I've been creating a whole role for you and hopefully the other person is willing to address that and talk about it. And, and maybe they'll be willing to admit that they've been doing the same thing with you. And then you can, you can share in that common foundation there. And I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make through all of this is that we're human beings. And that means that we have brains that do these things. We bond. We attach. And often what we attach to is not the person but a role that we have assigned to a person. And that sometimes, always, finding a way to ground yourself and finding a way to communicate about that, it brings you into a lower energy state. It reduces the tension, it reduces the expectations, it re reduces the miscommunication. Because you talk about it. And this run has really helped me to process it. And it was hard for me to turn the camera on and let that come out because I was processing it alone. And that's hard. It's hard to admit these things. It's hard to feel these things. But you can. You can feel them and you can survive them and you can move through them and you can process them. And you can gain insight from your hindsight. And maybe the next time you find somebody that you connect with, you can, you can build a relationship that's grounded, that keeps touching back. Rather than direct current, like Thomas Edison was playing around with, you can explore alternating current, like Nikola Tesla developed. Where instead of it being one force that just blasts forward in one direction, you can switch it. Boom, 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 boom. It alternates. We breathe in, I breathe you in, and then I breathe out and I process and I carry it back. And there's this back and forth, this alternating current with a grounding step after each inhalation, after each carrying back. And I think that's the safest and 
most powerful way to keep that flow of energy going and to keep a relationship healthy. And, and maybe you'll discover that it's not meant to be and that without the projection, it just doesn't work. Great, that's great information. Maybe that stings, but you won't be investing time and energy in something that's not gonna work, that requires projection in order to work, that requires fantasy then it doesn't work and it's bound to come apart at some point. And then you're going to make up stories about how men are all like this or women are all like this and relationships suck and I'm no good for relationships. And, and that's what I'm trying to do now is to, to process and just move through it without having it define me. I read a study a little while ago that said that when someone is broken up with, women feel more initially, but then they move on pretty quickly, not immediately, but they feel a lot. It hurts like hell when somebody breaks up with them, but they get over it. And men feel less initially when someone breaks up with them, according to this study, and then they never get over it that stays with them, it scars them, it shapes them. Uh, and there's a spectrum, meaning that some men are going to feel more than women in the beginning and some women are going to feel less than men. And it's not that I can predict what your individual behavior is, but on average, men mask their feelings initially. They don't let themselves feel and then that wound just never goes away. That rejection shapes them. I know that. I am profoundly insecure. Uh, and a lot of my early childhood and early adulthood has shaped me in a way that makes it very difficult for me to feel safe with anyone, uh, especially in an intimate relationship, but even with just friends. It's hard for me to, to trust and feel safe. And that's not the person. That's neural networks in my brain that are now physically incorporated into my being. It's who I am. And part of that, related to the study, might be that women generally have better social support networks. Not always. Again, it's a spectrum. Uh, women are more likely to talk about their feelings and what happened. They're more likely to get sympathy or have people support them. And, and men are often told to suck it up and stop crying and and they generally don't have people that they can talk to as much. So they, they don't ever really get to move through it or process it or heal from it. And Brene Brown talks a lot about that. Uh, in her first few books, it was all about women and shame. And then she realized as she progressed through her studies that men have potentially even more shame and that it's harder for them because they can't talk about it because they can't move through it because often people in their lives don't allow them to like I need you to be the rock I can't have you breaking down I can't have you moving through your feelings and processing and crying men don't do that men stay strong but what she realized is that when men stay what appears to be strong on the outside they get weaker and weaker and weaker on the inside. They erode from the inside out. So it doesn't make men strong, it makes men weak or violent or bitter or angry, and that's not strong. They may dominate and use power or force, but that's not strength. That's the inability to tolerate often because they have so much in them that is just so uncomfortable and they don't know what to do with it. So they lash out at others so that they don't have to because they can't process it. And if you're gonna bring these things up in me, I'm going to squash you so that I don't have to process it because that's not publicly allowed. So I'm processing. It's like physical therapy, moving through that range of motion making sure the scar tissue doesn't limit your mobility, making sure that as you heal, 
you keep that flexibility and even grow stronger. A good physical therapist will make you stronger than before the accident. And good processing of wounds related to relationships and grief and loss will make you stronger, more insightful, more honest, more grounded, more gentle, more realistic. But if you don't process, if you just hold on, then like an injury, that scar tissue forms and your mobility is decreased and then you're stuck. And that's who you are. That's the new normal for your body. And brains and minds are made of physical networks of neurons. Physical scar tissue in the brain, neuronal networks. And they will limit your mobility. They will limit your possibility. So process them. Heal them. It hurts. Physical therapy hurts. They're going to ask you to do things that you don't want to do. Anybody that was in a wheelchair and then had to learn how to walk again. It was a lot of pain, a lot of effort, and there was someone there to make you do it. And unfortunately in relationships, there's rarely someone there that can help you through that, that can, that can be there for you. And back to me turning this camera on. That's why I make these videos. That's the role that I want to play. Well, it's not a role, that's something I, I believe is important and that's what I offer. That maybe by watching this I can help you process. I can help you develop a full range of motion so that you don't heal with scar tissue. Okay. If you've made it this far, there's probably something going on in your life or you would have tuned out many minutes ago and just know that it's okay, whatever it is, it's okay. It's okay to feel, it's okay to cry. In fact, it's good. It touches the ground, it shows you truth. This is my reality. Wow, not the one that I thought I had, not the one that I wanted, but here I am. Here you are. Let's work here. This is where we can take steps. So let's take them. I love you guys. See ya.